Hi guys, today I am going to compare the fantastic new Sony A6700, a brand new release from Sony added to the lineup. I am going to compare it against the Sony A7 IV, one of my favorite cameras of all time. Now see, I think both of these cameras are exceptional hybrids. They are the best value hybrid cameras in Sony's lineup. One is APS-C, one is full frame. Let's put them together and see what happens and let's talk about it. Now, I think the a6700 and the a7 IV are absolutely fantastic cameras. That's why I purchased both of them. I will leave affiliate links down below. So I have no skin in the game. I don't care which one you buy as long as it gives me the scratch. You know what I'm saying? But I will say that the a6700 is a very popular camera right now. So if you do want to pre-order it, I would do that soon. Otherwise, you may be waiting quite a while. But the first thing I should show you what most people are curious about is the actual image quality, how it lines up against each other. So what I will do is I will just show you the all auto settings. Let's just say you took the camera out of the box, you press record and you used intelligent auto. Just what would the camera give you? And then I will grade them in S-Log3. Both of them are 10-bit cameras, 422. So you get to use that fancy S-Log3. I will apply a leaming LUT and then you can see that for yourself. Here we go. So of course, fantastic images coming out of these cameras. You can use them in conjunction with each other. Just use the S-Log3, grade them. Pretty easy to match the colors in post. Now, something that may jump out at you was the uh, depth of field that is much more shallow on the Sony because I was using a 16 millimeter 1.4 on the A6700 and I was using a 24 millimeter 1.4 on the A7 IV. So, on the A6700, of course, you have to apply that 1.5 times crop in terms of your depth of field. So at 1.4, the A7 IV is going to have a much more blurry background. It is one of the advantages of the full frame sensor that you can control that depth of field. You can get lenses like 50 millimeter lens full frame 1.2. There's no real equivalent to that in the APS-C world in terms of autofocus lenses. So if you want that super blurry background for photos or for videos, then the a7 IV will be the way to go. So of course, not everybody shoots wide open all of the time. Uh, I did it for those test purposes. Normally I shoot the a7 IV somewhere around f2. So now I will show you the higher frame rates. The a7 IV can shoot 4K 60 at a 1.5 times crop relative to its sensor, whereas the A6700, it can go all the way up to 4K 120. 4K 60 has no crop relative to its sensor, but the 4K 120 has a 1.5 times crop, but that is still better than the A7 IV that doesn't have it at all. Anyway, take a look. And lastly, I will just show you the 1080 footage in case you are curious. So now let me show you a rolling shutter test. Here we go. So as you can see there, when the a7 IV is in the full frame mode, it has worse rolling shutter than the a6700. The a6700 is somewhere between, say, an FX3 and the a7 IV. The a7 IV is a bit of an Achilles heel. Its rolling shutter is not great. I mean, I've never had a problem with it personally, but I don't whip my camera around a lot. So I don't see any rolling shutter on my footage with the way I use the a7 IV. And also, if you are having trouble with the rolling shutter on the a7 IV, you can go into APS-C crop mode, and then its rolling shutter will be pretty much equivalent to the a6700's rolling shutter. So once you're in APS-C crop mode in video, then uh, much better rolling shutter performance on the a7 IV. Now, of course, we gotta do a low light test. Everybody loves a low light test. Here we go.
So obviously not only is the a7 IV a full frame camera as opposed to an APS-C camera and that generally will be better in low light but it's also a very good full frame camera in terms of low light. It just it's fantastic. The a6700 is a good low light camera when it comes to APS-C cameras. It's just there's no way to compete with the a7 IV in this regard. Plus the ISO maxes out at 32,000 on the a6700 and can go to 102,400 on the a7 IV. So if you're in extremely dark conditions, a7 IV. Oh, and a quick note about overheating. I have never had the overheat warning come on on the a7 IV, I have used it for hours and hours. I have shot 4K 60 until the battery runs out. No overheat warnings whatsoever for me on the a7 IV. The a6700, I tested the overheating extensively with that. And here in Canada at about 23 degrees, no overheating at all in 4K, up to 4K 60. I just, until the battery ran out, that's uh, just worked. At 4K 120, it did overheat on me at an average of 19 minutes. So now let's get into some specifics about the, how the newly released A6700 has advantages over the A7 IV. So I've already mentioned a couple. You have 4K 60 with no crop and you have 4K 120 10 bit 422 with a 1.5 times crop. So if you want that cool 4K 120, you can get it at a very reasonable price point with the A6700. You also have 240 frames per second in HD if you want some super duper slow motion. Now, the, while the resolution of the LCD is the same on both cameras, 1.03 million dots, and they look indistinguishable to my eyes, the two screens, but uh, the A6700 has some extra touch functionality on its screen. You can swipe some menus away or back so that you have extra things on the screen that you can tap so that you don't have to dig further into the menus. You can also control your aperture, shutter speed, and ISO just by tapping on that and dragging it with your finger, which is great to see implemented on the new touch screen. And while the A7IV's autofocus is fantastic, the A6700 has kicked it up a notch with this new AI autofocus for, uh, you know, compared to the other generation, the A6600, the human and I auto detect is actually 60% better for birds. It is 40% better. It is just amazing. It never loses the eye of an animal or a person. And you can also now identify uh, trains and planes and automobiles. And so there are more things that you can track more easily. And the autofocus, as great as it was on the A7 IV, is even better on the A6700. And speaking of AI, you also have that AI auto framing where the camera can actually, it looks like the camera's following you around like a cameraman. So you can choose three different amounts of zoom and then uh, it can just, it's a cool thing to have for your solo shooters, make it look like you have friends when clearly you do not. And also you can set it so that it zooms in and out at uh, 15 second or 30 second intervals. And so you can record also just the no zooming whatsoever on something like a Ninja 5 and then have the zooming going on on your SD card. So that way you could have multiple angles, multiple camera movements, and it's just, that's a cool thing. It has a new time-lapse mode where it actually makes a 4K movie for you in camera. The a7 IV, you can still do time lapses traditionally. Just take your time lapse and then bring it into post and put it together. Or you can even use the S and Q, but the a6700 has an extra mode where it just does the traditional time lapse and then puts it together in camera for you. I really prefer that. It has 11 frames per second burst rate instead of 10 frames per second. And while that doesn't sound that much more impressive, the buffer is much faster on the uh, A6700. So you're going to get more shots if you're just holding down the button, the buffer clears very, very fast. And uh, I think you can get something like a thousand JPEGs if you do it, but even if you do it in RAW, you're going to get more photos more quickly than the A7 IV can provide. Rolling shutter, as I demonstrated, the A6700 has better rolling shutter than the A7 IV, at least when you're talking about the A7IV's full frame mode. The A6700 is smaller and lighter, which is better for travel, portability, running on gimbals. There's a lot of benefits to having a smaller, 
lighter camera. It has better clear image zoom. While there's clear image zoom on the a7 IV, you lose the ability to track and eye autofocus as well as soon as you go into clear image zoom. Whereas with the a6700, you keep all of your autofocus bells and whistles, which is fantastic because the clear image zoom works very well. It's very hard to tell the difference between footage on clear image zoom and not on clear image zoom on the a6700. So effectively you're getting more reach out of your lenses when it comes to video. In photo, to use clear image zoom, you have to just do JPEG only. Because the a6700 is an APS-C camera, that's a 1.5 times crop relative to full frame, and that can be a great thing for sports and wildlife photographers. Let's say you have a 400 millimeter lens on a full frame body, you stick that on the uh, APS-C body, now that's equivalent to a 600 millimeter lens. So you can see the benefit, right? APS-C lenses are often cheaper than full frame lenses. So this one right here, Sigma 16 mil f1.4, $350. So uh, the equivalent on my a7 IV, the equivalent field of view, 24 millimeter 1.4 G Master that I have is $1,400. And optically, the Sigma 16 mil is pretty much on par with that G Master. So you can see the value right there. Now you can, of course, use the APS-C lenses on the a7 IV, but you're gonna to have to go into APS-C crop mode, you're not getting the full IQ of the sensor. And when it comes to photos, you'll be dropping a lot of megapixels. And of course we have the price $1,400 versus $2,400. That is a very substantial amount of money. So now let's talk about the advantages the a7 IV has over the a6700. The first one I will talk about is the uh, electronic viewfinder, the EVF. The a7 IV has a bigger EVF. It is easier to use and see, and it is higher resolution. 3.69 million dots versus 2.36 million dots. We have a 33 megapixel sensor versus a 26 megapixel sensor. So if you are printing large or you are cropping in a lot, those are some extra megapixels that you may enjoy. And it actually samples 7K down to 6K on the a7 IV versus the 6K down to 4K of the a6700. So you will notice your video, if you are pixel peeping, the video will be sharper on the a7 IV. Of course, you have that fantastic full frame sensor, which can help you control your depth of field, get that really shallow depth of field if that is what you're looking for but also with that full frame sensor comes better dynamic range you're going to get more dynamic range out of the a7 IV so you got a nice bright blue sky and some dark shadows then uh, you'll be able to capture more of that information with the a7 IV sensor and as you've already seen it has much better low light performance two card slots this is a big one if you are getting paid you're doing client work you want that redundancy two card slots is always great and uh, both card slots can take SD cards and one of them can take SD cards and also CF Express Type A cards. You have a full size HDMI port on the A74 versus the small finicky micro HDMI that is on the A6700 and anyone who has plugged in and out a lot of HDMI cables will tell you full size is definitely the way to go. You have an extra customizable dial on the A74 versus the A6700 and you have more customizable buttons as well. And there is also a, a tiny little joystick on the back of the camera when you're trying to set your focus point, you can move that joystick around. A lot of photographers can't live without that little joystick. That little joystick is not on the A6700. And lastly, I will mention the APS-C crop mode again. That is fantastic when it comes to video because you can just go straight into APS-C crop mode and then you will get further reach out of your lenses. When it comes to video with photos, you know, you're still going to have enough megapixels to publish on things like social media, stuff like that, but you're not going to want to do a lot of zooming and cropping or printing very large. But in video, the APS-C crop mode is very, very handy. Now that is offset a little bit by the fact that uh, the A6700 has that great clear image zoom that even though you are zooming in, you still keep the eye autofocus and the tracking. So that may balance that out a little bit, but uh, you get true full 4K when you go into APS-C crop mode on the A7 IV. So for example, you're shooting on that 24 millimeter G Master 1.4, but the shot needs to be a bit tighter. Press a button, go into APS-C crop mode, boom, now it looks equivalent to about a 36 millimeter 
field of view. And if you're going to shoot a lot of 4K 60, it is great to just stay in APS-C crop mode so that when you switch over to 4K 60, you're not changing your framing. So I have to admit that the a7 IV is personally my favorite camera of all time, but I also have to admit that the a6700 is definitely a better value proposition. You just get so much camera for $1,400, 4K 120, for God's sake, 4K 120, along with all of the photo and video features that you get, the AI stuff, it is just so great. And when you couple that with the fact that you can get APS-C lenses for often much cheaper than full frame lenses, the value is off the charts. Now, if someone were to say, both of these cameras are free, which one do you want? I would choose the a7 IV. I just like having it in all situations. You know, you need photos with shallow depth of field, then uh, really shallow, you got it. You have the two card slots for redundancy. You have the full size HDMI. It is just, it's a workhorse of a camera and uh, I really, really love it. And I don't use 4K 120 enough to say that I desperately need it. So if they're both free, I'm choosing the a7 IV, but they're not both free. One costs $1,400 US and the other costs $2,400. So it is a really tough choice. And tell me down below which one you would choose and why, or which one you did choose, or is there another camera you would choose? Let me know down below. Anyway, thanks for watching this. We'll talk to you again soon. Okay, bye-bye.